Dun, dun. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yo, yo, what's going on, you guys? Prisman. It's your boy, Three Stickity Stacks, and this thing representing Team Kings of Games. This card might actually be like a mascot because he has like kind of like, all right, you know, like the strong emoji where you put the muscle arm and like look at what Prisman's doing right now. I don't know. I feel like he, he kind of, he had like this, this guy right here, he has potential as a mascot or like a cover art or something. We might make a token out of him, like a field center. Like, oh, like if you just want to say something strong, Prisman's right there. Flex on them. Anyways, I'm showing my mutant deck profile, right? So, okay, before I get into the list, I want to explain the pros and cons because I'm not going to lie. I want this deck to be better than it is, but I have had to face the harsh reality that this deck needs a lot of work. Yes, I know that can be said about so many decks. It's nothing new, but this deck itself, a lot of its weaknesses, to be honest, and you, I guess you'd have to play it to see, a lot of its weaknesses do come from itself. And that's a whole nother ball game. When you have to fight the battle of like an uphill battle at that, of playing against cards, uh, decks like Drytron, decks like Virtual World, decks like Dinosaur, decks like Zodiac Eldritch, those kind of decks where they all have their own kind of win cons and it's kind of sometimes difficult to interact with them. And I'm not gonna lie, this deck is not very good at playing through multiple interruptions. It's just not. Like this deck's not like, oh, I play through three negates and break your board. This is not that kind of deck. It's really not. It's good with conversions, temple swings, and consolidating resources for a big play. You know what I mean? And that can be a problem because when that one big place gets stopped, it can hurt you in such a huge detrimental factor because you take time to build your resources for this big push. And when a big push fails, it's like you have to take a turn or two off just to recuperate because this deck is not very solid with basically follow-ups and resource management. Um, So... Yes, it's already an uphill battle beating, beating meta decks with this deck. But then it has to deal with the weaknesses that it already has by itself. So, I believe mutants are a cool deck. I'm going to say this now before I get into the profile. This is a cool deck. Is it strong? Not really. It's, like, decent at best. Even in the best hands, like the hands of a best player, anybody knows that this deck needs more than just what it has to offer. So, you could play a Dogmatica variant. You could try to find some miraculous way to turbo out ultimate in it. Ultimus. Uh, you know, there's different ways that you can kind of refine it. But at the end of the day, this deck does have its issues with consistency, recursion, and follow-ups, and also pushes, like aggressive pushes. Like, I want to close the game out. As you guys see, that's literally the reason why I don't play Droll, because I'm like, bro, it's this deck is not like um like Drytron or V-Dub. Like, I don't want to keep referencing meta. Even like Dragon Maids, for example, Plunder Patrols, like those decks can OTK. This deck has trouble closing games out. So it's not, I'm not bashing the deck because, like I said, I think it's a cool deck. It has such a particularly unique playstyle that it's in its own niche. There's no deck that really operates the way this deck does. And I like that. I, that's why I like Drytrons. That's why I like Virtual Worlds. Because they have their own kind of style of playing. Just like, for example, how Ultra Athletes operate, UAs. They have their own unique pseudo mechanic. This deck has a pseudo mechanic not a summoning mechanic per se but it's like a pseudo summoning mechanic because there is a unique way that you get your cards out that other decks don't really do it that way so it's enjoyable in that regard the aesthetics of the deck are like ah eh. you know they're kind of ugly it's not like the artwork is amazingly beautiful they're mutants they're weird looking cards but with all that said i am going to get into the profile and here's starting with hand traps i'm playing three ash and three d shifter the reason why I didn't want to play Dogmatic and other variants is basically I wanted to play D-Shifter. And I kind of thought about Thunder Dragons. I kind of thought about Keystone Nemesis. I might play it because one thing that I did have, you know, and that's another issue that I guess I, sh I don't want to sound like I'm just complaining. But another issue I did have is like use it, utilizing these cards, you initially trade one for one with your opponent. But it's kind of like a neg because you, the best way, like, you can get these cards out with one card. Like, for example, you can use Monster 05 or Spell Trap 46 to literally search the target to banish to pump them out. So you essentially use them as the body and the card they searched as the trade out to get these guys out. But you're down one card, and now the next time you interact with your opponent, you're down another card. So it's like, it's okay at first, but after a, a couple turns or even the first turn, it's like, it slowly starts to deplete your resources where they diminish in card economy and you start to take negs 
And so that's why I kind of wanted to play Keystone Nemesis, just so I can have value every turn, so that these cards can trade in a residual way. Residual being like, I can pay for my cards over time and not have to worry about it anymore. I kind of just needed to throw that out there. But anyways, D-Shifter is what I'm on. Uh, like I said, it's a huge blowout. It's it's better than Droll for me because with Droll, it's hard for me to close the game out. But with D-Shifter, it's like I stunned him in a sense where I don't need to actually close the game out because they're not able to play. So I can build my resources while they still can't. So I kind of like this card a lot. This is why I'm playing Pure Mutants. I'm also playing Droplets. Yes, these do are like these do have a counterbalance between each other. They conflict. You can't use this after you use this, uh, and you can't use this after you use this. So it's like one or the other. But at the same time, if I drop D Shifter against Drytrons or Virtual Worlds, am I going to need Droplets right away? No, I might need Droplets after the Shifter fizzles on my turn, and now I can use Droplets. So. That's why I still feel like these cards are really good because they are blowout cards and they do help me a lot. And this is really, really strong against Virtual World as well because look how many traps I played. So I essentially can hit VW and Chu but now I have to kill those cards. Otherwise, it's all for nothing. And that's another thing that I kind of do this deck does. You know, like I said, it has its days. Uh, now for starters, this deck actually does have 12 really, I mean, 10 really good starters and three extra, like, okay, RNG starters. Like, if Trav is like a starter, if you see a starter, but if not, it's really not. It's just a deck thinner. It's like a, a plus one. Uh, so for starters, we have E-Telly. It can be either Spell Trap 46 or Monster 05. And I'm also maxing out on each of these. To be honest, I hate to not see these cards. It hurts. Like, it's like not seeing your kid. Like, it's it really, really hurts to not see these cards. It actually hurts your feelings. Because, like, you have to see these. That's why I also max out on expansion. I don't know who's not playing three of this, but to be honest... You need to play three of this card because when you don't see these cards right here, like Spell Trap 46 and Monster 05, it's really hard to get these cards out. These right here, it's really, really hard. Like, in fact, it's dang near impossible. Like, literally. Like, you're basically attributing two. Like, it's really, really hard. You know what I mean? Like, the purpose of these cards is, in my opinion, to facilitate these cards and having access to these is what allows you to, in the future, that's why I was saying about consolidating your resources for big play to get into ultimate is finally. But most of the time, you are going to be using like a synthesis or two to get him. I, I wish that I, I really wish, I wish, I wish so badly that I can summon this card on my first turn, like how Invo gets their Macabre out, but it just doesn't work like that. So these are the nine starters, the 10 starters that let you access your entire deck. You really don't search monsters off MO5. I'm just being honest. Like, I mean, you don't really don't search anything except for like Spell Trap 46. Because these, you just don't want them in hand. Like, you don't. So, literally, Monster 05, in my opinion, is not as good as Spell Trap 46 for the simple fact that this has better targets. But really, all I'm going to do with Monster 05 is I'm basically going to search Spell Trap 46 because I really don't want to add any other mutant monsters. I don't like these cards being in my hand. I like them being in my deck. I will even Evolution Lab them back because I don't like them. So, in my opinion, I think Spell Trap 46 is better because it also gives you a better follow-up in the form of expansion or it can let you access Cry. It just has more purpose and utility. But at the same time, sometimes you actually need a monster so that you can tutor out specific... Because, like, one, like, you'll do Spell, one, you'll do Trap, and one, you'll do Monster. So, it has its purpose depending on which mutant you want to get out. So, it's still good, but I think... Spell Trap 46 is more flexible. That's just me, though. Um, you will need to banish a monster sometimes. That's why it will come up when you search a monster to banish. Uh, but anyways, outside of the starters, Extrav was explained. I'm on Double Evolution Lab. I like this card a lot as a two of. I think it's really good. It comes up. It, the Cosmo Town effect is a lifesaver when you draw these cards. And also, at the same time, as a follow-up, this card is good. You know, being able to summon these guys from the banish zone and just get more advantage, it's really, really good. That is like this... And maybe like Mutant Cry are kind of the closest thing that you can get to a snowballing effect. And maybe Expansion, because you can actually summon the card as well. You don't have to like add it to your hand, you could special it. Uh, so like Expansion, Evolution Lab, and Cry are like the closest thing to a snowballing factor this deck can get to. Because to be honest, as I mentioned before, with the Mutants and the way I prefer to play them is like, I like to consolidate my resources. So what I mean is... I'm actually building my advantage up for a very big play. And that's why this deck is a mid-range deck. It's a control deck because its playstyle is passive and aggressive, but it's more passive than it is aggressive. 
it can get aggressive if you have enough resources but the resources do take time to build because your pushes come from multiple cars it's not like oh i just you know literally uh go like uh, basically kowloon and i have lulu and i have everything you know what i mean it's like you can't summon ultimate tis off of two cards you need to actually build up and because this is one of my main goals synthesis is like in between you know it's a really well designed and powerful card but my end all be all is to get the ultimate -tis. I mean, ultimates. Yes, you will sometimes close the game out before this card sees, like, play. And that's, sometimes it's kind of uh, disappointing because you never want to build it in before you've got this card out because it's so satisfying. You know what I mean? I guess it's just the satisfying feeling of, I worked so hard to get my ultimates out. I really don't want him to die. Please leave him alone and let him live so I can use his effect at least once. It's that feeling. Of, and that's what I like to do. But at the same time, you might want to change the trajectory of your focus because turboing out ultimates or ultimates or just consolidating your resources for him can sometimes be dampered by specific interactions and losing so much trading one for one and two for one with your opponent you're not able to do it so sometimes you have to just settle for okay i'm just gonna play the slow grinding control game and just keep resolving synthesis and beast and arsenal and mist as many times as i possibly can and just pray that i can wither my opponent to um a state where i can force the tempo if that makes sense um but yeah like i am playing one fusion I truly believe that the better way to summon them is going to be Mutant Cry. Fusion, I do play Verde and Akonda to see it more, but you can search it as well. And to be honest, it's it's not as good as it seems, even though you can fuse from your deck and stuff like that. It's like, it's okay. It's nowhere near shit off Fusion, put it that way. Uh, and I play Double Beast. Double Beast, uh, Beast is just really, really strong. Like, Beast is the best one, in my opinion. If Mist actually negated monster effects... For example, like literally, like um, like basically, uh, I'm sorry, not miss. <laughs> My bad. Uh, like basically, if, uh, Arsenal. I'm so sorry about that. If Arsenal negated monster effects instead of like just oh, you activate a monster effect, I target. I basically I get to um like banish a monster essentially. Like if it negated monster effects, in my personal opinion, I think Arsenal would be better than Beast. But for the simple fact that Beast is an actual negation and spells are extremely relevant to the T that. Almost every deck is going to be playing them. That's why you play two beasts. Uh, and they all get their own little cool follow-up play when they die. And sometimes you want them to die because I ain't going to lie. Sometimes I want that card. So I'll be like, can you kill this or do I need a crash? Like, what do I need to do for you to kill this card the way I need it to die? I don't want you to banish it or, like, bounce it. Like, I want you to kill this card for me, please, and thank you. Uh, but anyways, we have Arsenal. Uh, so as you guys can see... Uh, Beast can't be targeted by monster effects, but he negates spells. Arsenal cannot be targeted by trap cards, which is relevant, and, but it negates monsters. And then Mist cannot be targeted with spell effects, but this card is really, really good against control decks. I wish it had negated trap, but at the same time, sometimes, I really don't mind the draw effect because I'd be really fiending for resources with this deck, like a crackhead, I guess. Like, I'd really be wanting cards so bad. That's why, let me just pull him up. While I'm in the middle of my profile. I mean, one of resources, you know what I mean? Like, I'd be like, bro, like, I'm negging so much right now. Can I get some cards? Like, it's like, I'm really sitting here at a soup kitchen. Like, is it my turn? Can I get some soup? Fill my bowl up, please, bro. Like, I've been passing out to everybody. What about, where's mine at? Like, I kind of want to play this card. I really do. But I hate that if you can't play, it's, like, dead. But at the same time, if you can't play, it's like you were never going to win in the first place, right? So, like, there's counter arguments to it. And to be honest, I might end up just playing Keystone because it is a problem solver because, like, I want to be able to, my cards to pay for themselves as much as possible. The best it's going to get is, like, I resolve expansion to search or special, and then I use these cards to banish it from field because it's paid for itself. I'm not really taking a neg, you know what I mean? But moving past that, let me get over my uh, little, like, tendencies with this deck right now. Uh, so we have Triple Trap Trick. Trap Trick is the best trap in the deck. Uh, outside of expansion and then i'm on a uh, triple mutant cry triple punishment and triple prison and i play one of the clash uh so in the terms of like traps i feel like punishment and cry are the most important ones you know obviously trap trick is just as important because it gets all of them but like these cards kind of let you see your engine like well this one lets you see your engine in that regard but this one kind of does what punishment does is it fuels your ultimate's push so Remember, like I said, consolidating resources. So you're kind of like, you are playing in a conservative matter. At the same time, 
you're playing with the hindsight of like a chess game. It's like playing chess. Like you actually have a plan. You in the meantime, you're just doing what you can to hold your opponent at bay and just basically not die. Uh, and this card helps you to build towards that because it puts targets that you want for this. Yes, it is counterintuitive because these cards contradict each other. But at the same time, one fuels the other, if that makes sense. But this card is amazing. I really wish you could activate more than one because this card is really, really good. I, it, it's really, really good. Cry is an amazing card. It's well designed. Uh, Punishment's amazing too. I like. I have a lot of targets for it. Uh, and then I play Prison as like a Dragoon out uh, to deal with Dinos. It's crazy against Dinos. It's crazy against Eldritch. It's really good against Zodiac. Sucks against Drytron, but D Shifter and Droplets already kill Drytron. So like, I know that. This card doesn't really work that well against that deck. But Dryton is not the only deck on the planet. And this is like another really good Trap Trick target because, excuse me, I wanted my Trap Trick to basically be more versatile. Uh, like, I wanted it to be more versatile, basically. I didn't want to just have, like, these as the only cards I could access off of it. Sometimes that would really hurt me. Uh, where basically, once I resolve Trap Trick once for Punishment, it's like all I can get is Cry. And if Cry still can't be used... Like, I need a piece of interaction. So, like, that's why I chose Prison. It's a good card. And finally, I play Clash. Uh, I like this card. Like, I like this card because I guess I failed to mention that this kind of snowballs. But it's really just, like, you're basically just trading for a card that you're going to use anyways for the same ones. Like, the level 8 or hires. You're basically giving them food when you kill a monster by battle. And, like, it is a pseudo, like... I don't want to say Phoenix Chain. It's just like a pseudo effect veiler or an imperm on activation. But then, like, you get to draw cards, which is really, really good. That's why I like this. But just as a one of, uh, like, you need to set up with it. Like, do I want more? Yes, but you have a way to recycle your traps. That's why sometimes you really just be like, uh, can you kill my cards, please? Like, can you just get rid of it for me? Uh, but moving into the side deck, I play Triple Lance. Yes, I know, like, this card's good against this deck, but, like, it's good against other decks, too, to be honest. It's really, really good. Uh, and then we have Triple Nib. Uh, Nib is a blowout, and you definitely want to be siding it. Because there's some decks that still this card is really, really good against. And then for back row, I play three evenly. You don't mind trading your battle phase. You really don't get to OTK that often. Uh, like, I, it's, I would almost say, like, you never really OTK, like, at all. Like, it just doesn't happen. Like, unless you're playing Dogmatica, because Nadir Servant and Ecclesia both put 5,000 damage on board. If you have an extra deck monster, which you could turn these into all mirage and be like cute like that. Uh, but if I'm not on Dogmatica, even though I want to, I did build it originally as Dogmatica, but I just went to pure. Um, so yeah, you're really not OT King, so you don't care about throwing your battle phase to one for five them. And then there can be only one. I like this card a lot. What I also like is that it, just in case it actually comes up to where I need to, because these are psychics, right? And then these are psychics. And most of the time, don't get me wrong, you're using them to put out a non- psychic so it doesn't really ever come up to where like it gets in the way but worst case scenario if it ever does you can banish it from your field keep that in mind so even though it doesn't really like hurt your deck if you ever actually want to commit to multiple of the same type you just banish this from your field for one of your mutant cards and then i played three elder skull king and pegasus for my uh but and you know synthesis is also a punishment target and then just in case somebody tries to resolve maximus on me i play nova and Makaba, because this deck, this extra deck is just so free. Uh, and then these are the main cards. Like these are important. Like D6 and then the two Verdes is like what you're actually going to summon. You don't really summon anything else. Like maybe if they resolve Maximus, you're getting on Makaba, but these are the only cards you summon from the extra deck. This, it hurts that you don't really summon this as much as you want to. And even when you finally do, I'm not the type of person that's going to be like, oh, bruh, as soon as this card hits the field, you literally win the duel. You really don't. Like, it, this card is crazy. Like, it does a lot. This card does a lot. And when it's destroyed, let me just read this to you. If this card is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can add up to three of your banished mutant cards, a spell trap, and a monster, which is really, really broken. So, like, the, the payout for this card is worth it. And I'm glad they did because I would have been upset if they didn't because, to be honest, you have to work so hard to get it out in the first place. It better pay for itself in some way, shape, or form. But that is going to be the profile, you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'm going to say a quick prayer, and I'm going to be out. I do hope this deck gets a lot more support, not just one or two. Like, this deck needs at least three cards that are really, really good. Like, another monster. Um, maybe, like, another powerful spell. And, like, 
something. It, it maybe a spell trap and a monster would do it justice, but like this deck just needs a lot, and it needs speed. Like it needs aggression. It needs to be like able to special summon more than like three, four times. You know what I mean? But anyways, our Father with art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Lord Jesus Christ. Thy kingdom come. And that will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. Please give us this day our daily bread, Lord, and please forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, Father, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the glory, and the power forever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, I pray. Thank you, Father. Amen. And like I said, don't get me wrong. I, this deck is good, but I do believe it deserves, it deserves to be better. And I feel like it's going to get better. I don't think they're done releasing support for this deck. So right now, it's like definitely tier like two-ish. Like I almost want to say tier 2.5 because I'm very realistic uh, with decks. Like I don't like to overhype stuff. I don't like when other content creators do that. Like anybody on YouTube, if they're making something sound better than what it really is, it's very misleading and people kind of, you know, they take that and they run with it. So they end up like spending their money on this stuff. So like they're throwing money away for something that they bought. Like they really believe is so good because they really trust this content creator. But I'm not gonna lie to you. Like this deck, it's it's okay. You know, it, like it's decent. It's not horrible. It's good. You know what I mean? And it's pretty affordable. So that's another thing. Like you might as well pick the core up now and start playing it and pray for more support in the future. But anyways, I'm gonna be signing out. This is the end of the video. Peace.